makes it a little bit more interactive and easier. So obviously, I'm here to, tonight to talk about Christine. Uh, what we're actually uh, engaged in doing, like Dave said, is replacing the keel in the boat. Uh, it is the only part of the boat that dates back to 1883, from when the boat was originally built. And when the boat was restored 12 years ago, 10 years ago, I'm a little unsure as to when that was, uh, they kept the keel because they wanted to keep a portion of the boat to aid in the process of becoming a National Historic Landmark, which the boat is now a uh, National Historic Landmark. Uh, we are replacing the keel because uh, at that time when they chose to keep the keel, um, they made a, another repair to a long series of repairs and patches that had been done on it for 120 years or so. And uh, we're replacing it this winter because it basically is, had reached the end of its service life and needed to be done. So uh, that's a picture of the boat being hauled out at Swanica in October. We started um, the middle of October, I think we hauled her out. Uh, uh, we had a little bit of uh, convolution getting the boat here, obviously this site has a lot of history. A lot of boats were built here in the past. Uh, but when the state took it over, they took out the railways that were here, and there's no facility other than the ramp for taking the boat out. So what we actually did, uh, we tried to contact a company that specializes in moving large boats. This is actually the company that we're going to use to launch her uh, in a couple of months, called Brownell Boat Moving. They actually have uh, large hydraulic trailers that they will just drive right in the water on the ramp here. Uh, but we were unable to do that, so what we actually had to do is kind of funny. Uh, we hauled her out at Salonica across the bay and put her on a flatbed trailer, um, which is fairly easy, fairly straightforward. Uh, drove uh, 30,000 pounds down the highway, 50 miles an hour. Most amazing thing I've ever seen, actually. The guy driving this really huge boat, which was as wide as the road as if he was driving a car. It's completely nuts, but he had, he had absolutely <coughs> complete control over the situation. He swerved to avoid dogs, did, you know, was just barely missing the branches on the, so on the bushes on the side of the road. Uh, and we, what we ended up doing was bringing her over here to Oyster Bay Marine Center and picking her up with a crane. The reason for that is that the trailer that was capable of hauling the boat 10 miles from Sawanica to here was not capable of unloading the boat. Uh, it's a transport from boatyard to boatyard trailer, you know, just your, essentially a flatbed uh, truck. And we have no facility um, other than like super traditional methods like hydraulic jacks and rollers and jack stands and all this stuff that would have taken us days to unload, to jack the boat up and unload it. Uh, what we actually did is we drove over here to Oyster Bay Marine Center and he uh, picked us up with a crane and we switched trailers to a much more light duty trailer which was capable of bringing the, bringing the boat here from Oyster Bay Marine Center which is what, a mile away, half a mile, something like that. And the reason we didn't load it on that trailer from Sawanica is because that trailer was like borderline just hauling it the mile at like <laughs> 10 miles an hour. Um, <laughs> it all worked out fine. It was, you know, a little bit entertaining. It was really cool to see the you know, 65-year-old crane hauling up the, picking up the 120, 130-year-old boat. Um, and we dropped her off uh, in the empty building. Um, this is kind of a thing that repeats itself in my life over and over and over again. I specialize, my career seems to be specializing in restoring traditional boats that have some sort of non-profit educational focus, a lot of Coast Guard inspected boats. Uh, that seems to be the way it is. I happen to be a traditional boat guy. Uh, if, it, if, if the technology was invented less than 50 years ago, I'm not really interested in it. Uh, and I don't know why that is, but you know, uh, when I was a little kid, I was the kind of person that was constantly taking things apart and you know, trying to figure out how they work and put them back together. And uh, that's what this job really is. So, um, how did you get her off the trailer once you got her in the ship? That was a hydraulic fork trailer, ah. which is 
basically a trailer that just drives down either side of the boat. You know, the axles are separated. It's like a giant tuning fork. And you set that where you want oh. under the boat and then put beams across and the whole trailer jacks up. Uh, and that's totally fine. It's, um, and that's actually the way we're going to launch her when Brownell comes in a couple of months uh, to launch her. Their trailer is a much more a high capacity trailer to do that. Uh, this trailer that Lighthouse Boat Moving had just doesn't have the capacity to go long distance with this kind of weight. They move a lot of smaller boats around easily. And it's like the standard form of boat yard moving trailer. You know, either it's actually if you've seen those self powered trailers in the boat yards that uh, actually have like a little motor on the side and essentially just a trailer that they move around, that's exactly the same format. Uh, it actually happens that the company that's coming in April uh, is Brownell Boat Moving and the father, who's no longer part of the, I think he's either retired or has passed on, is the guy who invented this technology for moving, the fork trailer for moving boats around because they were always doing it with cradles and rollers and all this crazy nonsense. Um, so when we move her, when we pick her up later on, we'll just drive the trailer in underneath and the trailer will pick her up and then go and dunk it in the water. Um, historic boat, empty building. Uh, like I said, there's actually a couple more pictures that we'll probably see of the same kind of thing. Uh, I actually don't have a location for my business. Uh, for some reason, it just seems to work out better for me. I end up traveling around to do specific jobs wherever the boat happens to be. Uh, maybe that's the nature of the kind of boats I specialize in. Uh, there's a lot of people in the traditional boat world, in the big uh, sailing ship world, that are itinerant. You know, they move around from project to project. Uh, I just happen to be settled in the area, and there's enough work around here that I can <coughs> travel around for the job. Um, so mo most of the time when I get involved in fairly large projects, it usually starts out as like boat all by itself with nothing around it and we have to build everything just to make it work. So uh, luckily enough in this case, we have this beautiful building that the state put up for us uh, and um, it actually is kind of luxurious compared to most of the situations that we get into. <laughs> Uh, or that I get myself into in the wintertime because it actually has heat and it's not raining on you and you're not working under a tarp. Uh, this building was great, but like I said, it was completely empty when we started the project. If you go over there now, there's not a square inch of floor space to be found anywhere. There's pieces of boat <coughs> all over the place, tools, all that kind of stuff. Did they build the building just to do this uh, restoration, or they built it? The, the, I think Prior. the original idea behind the building, which has been talked about for years and years and years, was that it was supposed to be uh, some sort of museum slash education center that represents something like what Jacobson Shipyard okay. is about. You know, they wanted to keep the state and the town, the people in the area, and especially the guys from the Waterfront Center, who were big impetus, the, the Christine guys, they wanted to keep some focus of that kind of stuff going on around here. That's why the building happened. Uh, yes, correct. The ballpark. Yeah. Um, the uh, okay. Well, whatever. It sounds good. Um, um, at this point, that's what the building is for. Okay. Uh, we're hoping that we can keep some. You know, I know the waterfront center is hoping we can keep some kind of stuff going on. Uh, that same kind of stuff going on around here in that particular building that would be a great thing to have around here. Uh, so October, uh, we spent a couple of weeks installing tools, wiring the tools, uh, building um, workbenches and sawhorses and um, the incredibly complex structure that we had to put under the boat because uh, we're doing the process in the complete reverse order from the way that you would actually do it if you were building a boat, or even restoring it. Um, when you build a boat from scratch, you start with the keel, you put the frames, you know, put the rest of the backbone structure up, put the frames in, put the planks on, put the deck beams, put the deck, all that. We're starting with a complete boat, and all we want to do is take the keel out. But when you do that, when the boat, you see any boat uh, sitting in a boat yard, 